Hello, hi and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video and this video is going to be related to so many different things which you guys have been requesting me for the past couple of days. So I finally thought of jam packing all of that together into one package, into one video and presenting it out to you guys. So we, before we get started, if you are new here, let me remind you, I'm Christy. I'm a physiotherapist working in the UK and I make up videos for a lot of different physios around the globe. It is to help you guys out. Um, with so many different queries related to studying in the UK, taking up a master's, hunting for universities and uh, so much more like working after that and stuff like that. With your HCPC registration, you've got to check out the video on how to fill up a form uh, for international applicants. Uh, HCPC form that is and uh, this video is going to be regarding uh, about working in the UK how the band scale is for physiotherapists in the UK and also how um, things are you know checked like pre-employment checks when you sub uh, submit a job application out there so yeah we'll get started but before we start let's quickly quickly get to know something else which is going to be a huge thing for a lot of students out there you like if you are looking up for studying in the uk and if you're hunting in uh, for universities then one of the best universities i would say is manchester metropolitan university which i've already said a couple of times before in my channel so Here's a very good uh, opportunity, a golden opportunity for students out there. You will have to grab this. This is a live chat opportunity that you're going to get with the current students in Manchester Metropolitan University, which is going to happen on the 23rd and I think the 24th of February. So UK time is going to be 10 to uh, 2 uh, and the Indian time uh, when this live chat will happen would exactly be about 3 to 7 p.m. So you might be a student uh, who is looking uh, for joining in this university, Manchester Metropolitan University. Maybe you would like to know so much more about various aspects related to studying in this particular university. Then you can definitely get a chance to chat live with one of the students maybe from your country or from other countries so don't worry about it and if you really want to register for this live chat you can go down to my description box and uh, check out the link that I'm going to be putting down there in the description box for all of you all so go into that link what you have to do just register with them and they'll get back to you and will give you details about how to go on with the live chat so for now we will get started with our video Let's first get thing that we're going to check for today is about working in the uk for physiotherapists so what are the different sectors which physios work in in the uk in the united kingdom the first is of course there are so many different variants so many different sectors but if you take up main sectors out there is the nhs which is the national health service for the united kingdom then you've got the private sector you've got the sports sector and you've also got the charity sector so there are volunteers who go out for charity purpose and help out physiotherapists and stuff anyone can do that and i think physios get in so many different people uh, from the community who are maybe students in physiotherapy who want to know more about how physiotherapy is and stuff like that so there are so many different sectors in which physiotherapists uh, physiotherapists work in our country so the next thing that i'm going to talk about is how physios work inside the nhs so we'll see about that the NHS system has both the rotational physiotherapists and the static physiotherapists. So the rotational post for a physiotherapist would depend upon the physiotherapist's capabilities and exposure, how much experience they get and stuff like that. It will last for about maybe four to six months and more than that for some physios and in some cases. So it depends on how much practice you've already got in the field required or in the field that you are interested in 
uh, and things like that so that is how rotational pose work and it varies also depending on the different NHS trusts that you might be in so if you are in an NHS trust from one place say about from Birmingham then it wouldn't be the same way the rotational pose work for physios in an NHS trust in Manchester maybe so it differs from place to place now there are some key uh, differences or key things that you have to keep in mind while we look into the NHS basis of uh, jobs for physiotherapists so let's look into that first is the banting system it's going to be a precise banting system and uh, it is going to be the same with all the trusts so inside the UK that is uh, so the first would be the banting system which would also indicate the level of experience and the pay that you'll be getting uh, and uh, to be yes I do know that a lot of different people out there want to know the pay scale and stuff before that I'll be putting up this video which is regarding banding and then I'll come up with another video and we'll see what we can you know know more about the pay scale and stuff okay so the second thing that you'll be looking into which would be the key factor uh, with some you know differences uh, among the different NHS trusts would be the recruitment process within the NHS so the banding system done the recruitment process you'll have to know about that and then joining the health and care professionals council or the HCPC council and joining a union such as the CSP or the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists so these are the main things that you'll have to know about before working in the UK now the pay would be uh, according to the band that you're in so I'll quickly go in through the banding for physios it starts from banding 2 which is clinical support worker who you know works under a physiotherapist band 3 would be clinical support worker higher level band 4 band 4 is you know just like a physiotherapy assistant so uh, if you want to work if you want to know more about the scope of practice of physiotherapy you can work as a band 4 that's actually I would say not possible if you are there out internationally but if you are here on another visa and you want to know more about like for example say if you are on a spouse visa here then you can actually go out there on band 4 and then work your working for your registration process also and then slowly go into band 5 after uh, being a physio physical therapy sorry a physiotherapy assistant for quite a long time work in the band for work under a physiotherapist who is qualified and then get to know the whole job and then maybe get into band five so you can do that so that is another way I'm saying this for people who come here on other visas like spouse visa or maybe student visa you can come in and no, you can actually apply for a job after the student visa, to be honest, instead of being a physiotherapy assistant. But when you are a student, maybe you can work in as a physiotherapy assistant. So that is possible. Then band five is the proper job title, which comes in as a physiotherapist. So that would be a fresher or a graduate. And then band six is a physiotherapy specialist. So this person would be having knowledge regarding up particular area in physiotherapy for example uh, elderly rehab like I, I do more of elderly rehab so I'm completely you know focusing on that and specializing on that then uh, there is you know bands where they focus on other physios where they focus on neuro or maybe MSK or sports ortho guy neck so many different things so band six is just after you know you come in from band five you get a knowledge and then you know what you want to specialize in and you precisely go in for that and that's how you specialize and become a band six obviously there are different courses cpd going on and stuff then you have band seven which is physiotherapist advanced or specialist physiotherapist or physiotherapy team manager that's when you're you know handling a lot of different physios and students as well so in band 6 also you are handling students in band 5 also you get to handle other people but not exactly but 
yeah, maybe the newer people who join in and stuff. But in band six, you can handle students. So uh, I am actually also into a post of being, I am in the post of being a practice educator for a couple of students. So I will be discussing about those things and sharing my experience of being a practice educator for physio students out there in some other video some other time. OK, so, yeah, so we reached till band seven, which is advanced physiotherapists or physiotherapy team manager or specialists. Then band eight A is physiotherapist principals. So they would be, you know, like the head head of the department and they would be either working in universities uh, who you know have a lot of tutors and physiotherapy and stuff like that so they'll be handling so many different stuff uh, band 8a and band 8b they're called physiotherapist consultants so band 8a and band 7 have been so much in demand and so much in focus especially when a lot of shortage and vacancies came in for First contact physiotherapist, MSK physiotherapist, that is. So that came under, you know, they have to be band 7 or band 8A. That's only when you can apply for the job. You'll have to have an MSK um, master's degree. You'll have to have completed so many years of experience and got so much knowledge, done short courses and stuff like that. So that's for the first contact physiotherapist. And so many of you have been emailing me uh, regarding um, any posts vacant or posts open for physiotherapists and for coming in from India especially. So I would say to all those people that yes, we are still waiting for our occupation to be updated in the shortage occupation list. Uh, having said that, there's another update which I would like to put in from the CSP, the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists in UK, that we uh, are actually waiting for uh, March because by March, the CSP has uh, asked, and I think that's going to happen, that uh, the government should reduce the band, um, uh, not the salary, but they should make the minimum salary for tier two visas for physios as um, from 25,000 or 27,000 pounds per annum. So if that happens, then band five physios can actually opt for tier two visas. That's if you are a fresher or a graduate, you can also opt for tier two visas. Uh, and so from band five, maybe band six can also opt in. And so that goes on. So tier two visas will become an opportunity much better opportunity after March this year 2021 having said that it is a lot of people have been asking me is it easy to get tier 2 sponsorship and work permit and stuff no it isn't because you need to find an employer you need to find a person who can give you sponsorship or the certificate of sponsorship which is COS so that's quite hard uh, but I would say if you've got years of experience and stuff like that in MSK, then do check out for vacancies for first contact physiotherapists within the NHS trusts around the UK. So you can do that. And I'll quickly take up one of the emails that I've got from so many different emails, which was Vijit Mishra. If you're watching me and I know you're new here and a new subscriber, I would like to say, Mishra Ji, that... Um, You've got more than five years of experience, you said, and uh, in MSK, and you've got a master's in MSK sports, MSK and sports. So I would say um, it is it is possible for you to find a vacancy with first contact physiotherapy post within that post. Uh, and just make sure that you keep your CPD profile updated, your continuing professional development profile updated. That is nothing but all the short courses, all the kind of skill development that you've done in the past couple of years, including your training years. You can make, that all, make all of that in as a profile or maybe an e-document or something like that and keep it with you in handy just in case you might need it when you are attending interviews for the NHS. So that's it. So I'll come up with, I'll be replying back to all the emails out there, but I will come up with one email each in all of my videos. So stay tuned for that too from my upcoming videos. So now I'll say about what happens, uh, you know, when you are wanting to join the NHS. So just imagine that you've come, you've done your studies, like you've 
completed your course, whatever course you come in, master's or otherwise undergraduate course in physiotherapy, that is bachelor's. After that, when you're doing job hunting, what all do you need to know? How do you apply for jobs and how is the recruiting process and all that? So the job hunting, each department is responsible for its own recruitment or staff inside each NHS trust. And uh, there are so many different jobs which are being advertised on NHS job account. So once you get your course done, once you get your HCPC registration done, that is when you would be uh, automatically getting a chance or an opportunity to register with the NHS jobs accounts. So you can have an account of your own where you can log in and you can get to know the different vacancies inside the NHS. So that's only after your HCPC registration you get to do that. So after you've done your course in the UK, if you're wanting to job hunt, make sure that you get your HCPC registration as soon as possible so that you can have an NHS account and get job hunting, get interviews done and get a job all right so um so you get uh the site you get into the site when you're job hunting which is www.jobs.nhs.uk and the on which is the online recruitment website for jobs within the nhs and all the vacancies within the nhs would be shared there with job center plus and you will be able to access details through your local job centers that's the plus when you have your own NHS account. Now, how do you make applications? That's the second thing that you need to do while thinking about joining the NHS. So when employers are advertising for job opportunities or vacancies, they will produce a job description which you have to read thoroughly and understand thoroughly. And that would be like the outline of how the job is going to be, the job summary, the main tasks and your responsibilities that you will have to abide by and also a person specification which means the kind of candidates they're looking for. So that is they wish to attract or that comes under the essential desirable criteria. So the job description you have to read and understand and the person specification too. So these are the two things that you need to look into while uh, looking for jobs um, which suits you the best. Only apply then. Which suits you the best you have to look for that and when you're making your CV out for the particular job do make sure that you're you know putting in all the essential things which is uh, mentioned in the person specification and the job description all your relevant informations okay so this this is all available for each job on NHS job site and uh, make sure that when you're shortlisted for a position you should at least okay meet all the essential criteria which is up there put up for each job now, we look into what happens when pre-employment checks occur. So, what would be the pre-employment checks that your employer would be doing soon before uh, you get into working with them? Would be uh, first is verif verification of your ident identity. That is, your employer would request you to submit photographic as well as non-photographic evidence uh, to verify your identity then your right to work checks that is if you are living outside the UK you're not a UK national or not a European national then you would be um, asked to you know provide an evidence of sponsor or a certificate of sponsorship which your employer should be providing you with then qualification checks to check your relevance for the position that you've applied and uh, that will be verified once the job offer is made um, registration checks is the next one so before appointing a health professional the employer will check whether you're registered with a relevant regulatory body whether you have got any special conditions applying to yourself and um, you know for example uh, a relevant registration one would be for physios at CPC and most of you uh, like I know without HCPC registration you won't be able to work in as a qualified physiotherapist inside the UK. Uh, having said that the other registration that some job 
uh, employers look in for is CSV registration, which most of the physios do have already. So they really don't put it down in the specifications, but some uh, people do put it down in the specification. So if you're like a new graduate or if you're just a graduate, that is, uh, maybe you might take time to be a CSP member, which is a Chartered Society of Physiotherapists member, union member. There are some people who become a member right from the time they're students also, so it doesn't really matter. But CSP membership, I would say, is a must because then you'll get um, a knowledge, a true thorough knowledge of so many things that are happening inside your occupation as well as so many different updates which you need to know regarding your profession. And you need a guidance at the end of the day. So you do need a CSP registration. So some they specify that you need one, some they don't specify but you still have to keep one. It also, you know, there is private insurance and stuff also with that. So because of so many different medical legal issues that goes along with our profession I think it's always to be on the safer side so I am a chartered member there are three different memberships I think for CSP a registration one is associate member one is chartered member one is student member and I think uh, there is one for overseas like if you are outside the UK and you still and you're not working as a physiotherapist in the UK, you're not doing it at the moment too. You can actually be a member of the CSP. That's for overseas. I'm not too sure. I think it's associate members who can do that. I'll check and let you know in the next video. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to talk about after registration checks would be disclosure and barring service checks, which is DBS checks. So that is basically coming to know if you've got any criminal record uh, in the last couple of months and stuff like that or previously. So uh, whether or not to appoint you for the job will also be regarded with your DBS check, will be in regard with that. So uh, reference checks is the next one. So they'll just check your previous, just your previous employment history. So your references will be requested by your employer with your consent and they will be obtained willing by an appropriate person. So um, all the writing would be done there. Then is occupational health checks. That is each NHS employer will give staff an occupational health check, which is to ensure that you're fit to work so that your employer can provide you with an adaptation for you to do in your job as well as ensure you that you're up to date in all your vaccinations so that's occupational health checks so i'll quickly read again all the pre-employment checks would be verification of your identity right to work checks qualification checks uh, disclosure and barring service checks and reference checks so these are the different things that would be checked uh, when it comes to pre-employment checks by your employer so I'm happy that I've covered in so many different things that you all have been asking me for the past couple of days and I hope that I've done complete justice with helping you all out through this video and I'll be upcoming, sorry, I'll be coming up with a lot of different videos regarding um, the pay, the average pay and so many different other things. So I hope you all um, got so much information, much relevant information regarding physios working in the UK, the banding system and the pre-employment checks. I hope you all really, really thoroughly got something to know today about it. So I'll see you through another video. There are so many different videos lined up for all of you all. So do make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I'll put in all the relevant links that you have to go through, especially the one for the live chat for so many student physios who are looking in to come for uh, your master's or maybe undergraduate level uh, in physiotherapy into Manchester Metropolitan University. I'll share the link down in the description box and so many more things down in the description box, all that you need to know, okay? So I'll see you through another video. Stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. God bless.